Scruff really needs to upgrade his FOB security. Who's that? <laughs> now, let's see. Aha! Found it. The unreleased Christmas codec moments. Well, better late than never. So, any codec moments from you, Snake? Hello everyone, welcome to a very Merry Christmas Codec Moments. I am Ephraim Scufflegrit, joined here with Flash Medallion. How are you doing today, sir? Merry Christmas, Scuff. Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm right. good, I'm good. How are you? Right on, pretty good. Just got off a, uh, it's the busy season right now at work, so money's flowing in, a little stressful, but uh, other than that, things are going friggin' amazing. Nice, nice. We had a bit of a gathering last night, we watched the Star Wars Holiday Special, which is, is I've never seen the whole thing in one sitting. I've seen parts of it. Yeah, it was pretty funny. What's to say? It's a complete fucking train wreck. Yeah. Um, it's a very good. It's a very good quote we found. Um, someone who reviewed it from the AV Club said that I can't remember exactly how they phrased it, but it, it's pretty likely that the show was written and directed by a sentient bag of cocaine, which is pretty accurate, man. Like shit, Carrie Fisher, she's just fucking wiped out, man. And all the other people... Oh, Mark, Mark Hamill has a good go at, like, not sucking. He's all right. But this is so much weird shit. It's... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into it. Watch it if you can. Get your friends together to suffer in unison, which is the spirit of Christmas, I think. I thought you were about to say you found a good quote from the movie, and I was like, I mean, aside from no, Wookiees no. growling, that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty... Uh, There's a lot of, of Wookiees growling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so watch that. Oh, we also watched Turbo Kid. If no one's seen that, that's pretty cool. Kind of hard to describe, but... Um, it's really funny. I think uh, with the Star Wars Christmas special too, like George Lucas actually like set out to like destroy all copies of it that were ever made. And like after seeing it, like I can totally see why. Not only is the premise completely stupid, you got to get Chewbacca back to Kashyyyk in time for Christmas. But I mean, with all of the Wookiee growling, there's not even any subtitles. Yeah, and it's it's trying to be a variety show. Like one of the Wookiees is playing on his hollerboard, and then you just got to watch like this shitty gymnastics routine for like what feels like 20 minutes, and then. Grandpa Wookie Chi, whatever he's called, goes into like this VR thing where like it's basically like a sex fantasy with this woman in front of him talking to him, and it's like, who is this made for? This is is a cartoon with the first introduction of Boba Fett, which is kind of all right. The animation's so fucked up. Uh, yeah, the the plus side was because as you were saying, it had been destroyed. Uh, where was I? Yeah, because it's been destroyed, the only copy you can get is, like, people who happen to tape it on VCR when it's screened. So the version that I downloaded had, like, ad breaks with all these American ads from 1979, and that was a treat. Like, most people were taking bathroom breaks during the show and coming back in time to watch the ads. Uh, it was pretty funny. Yeah, we uh, we definitely had some interesting ones going on back then. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Right. So we uh, we got some special Christmas stuff planned. Uh, it's mostly your idea, so I'll let you uh, walk us through it before we jump right in. It's, it's hardly an idea. It was half an idea. But I thought <laughs> talking would get solid in the context of Christmas movies. Um, it's just a half ass idea, but it should lead to something interesting, I guess. I guess the one that occurred to me was, if you've, everyone's probably seen or know of, a one, It's a Wonderful Life by Frank Capra, I think about a guy who wishes he was never around or he goes to kill himself and his guardian angel shows him what it would be like if he wasn't there. So uh, I just randomly thought how a Metal Gear Solid would be like or the various Metal Gear Solids or the, just a general story uh, with no snake or no character or however you want to put it. Yeah, so you want to do make, it uh, one by oh, one? Does or? <laughs> yeah, does that make any sense to you at all? Like, I'm just wondering like what would have happened, say, if there was no Solid Snake in, in Metal Gear, in the first Metal Gear? Yeah, I mean, like, that sounds great. I, uh, I had one, too. Like, do you want to talk about, uh, I mean, we could just not do this at all, too. It's a half-baked idea I had, like, about 30 seconds ago, going through uh, actual Christmas movies, you know, like, what if uh, some of the Metal Gear characters were in it? Uh, yeah, I'd, 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 like to, I'd like to see a Die Hard with Solid Snake. But anyway, why don't we just get cracking? Like, everyone in the chat jump in too. Like, I'm just trying to think now what would have happened with No Soul of the Snake in Metal Gear. It's, it's a weird one. It is, because uh, obviously things were just going according to plan, because, uh, I mean, you take Solid Snake out of the equation, that's more or less what Big Boss was kind of expecting to happen, because, I mean, he was expected to fail going right into it. Yeah, so basically, well, if we assume that, say, he sent in Frank Yeager, who was meant to fail, and I guess he assumed that would do the trick, 
and for whatever reason, they had to send Silas Snake in again as well. So he just say say he just gets killed. Yeah. So Big Boss's plan comes to fruition the first time around. I think so. Yeah, and uh, that would I assume. What exactly was that a, plan? My idea. It's been such a long time since I've played Metal Gear One. I mean, I think the end goal was the world of Eternal Warfare. Yeah, but yeah, we don't know a lot of specifics, eh? That's true. So, All we really know is that uh, Outer Heaven was pretty much the only nuclear nation at the time, if I'm remembering things right. So you've got this, you know, superpower at this point. It's got the only nuke in the world. He can pretty much call whatever shots he wants at this point. There's no Solid Snake to come in and bring down the mm. Metal Gear. And I mean, there's there's a lot that could happen without Solid Snake there. Yeah, I still don't... I guess the funny thing is never really quite sure what this thing is about like is it literally just what happens in Metal Gear Solid 4 would he be sending well and what's Big Boss going to do is he going to like go to little countries and go hey the other country says your mom's fat and then hey Syria says you're gay um, and like start fights is that, is that what he's planning to do I've never quite been 100% sure I, I know I know the outcome that he just wants everybody fighting um, I don't really know how he planned to get there no I mean neither I think a lot of that's been like reconceptualized throughout later games in the series too uh because, I mean, mm. I, they've never really mentioned again the fact that Outer Heaven really is the only place with a nuke. Yeah, that's a big part of it that kind of gets brushed away. And I kind of like how um, the Phantom Pain, surprisingly, of all things, like, again, it ties back into Metal Gear in the ways that nobody ever really thought needed tying in. Um, the idea that there were no nukes in the world, and then um, this Outer Heaven popped up with a nuclear platform. So, yeah, I guess that, that's more defense than anything. I mean... We've certainly circled in on that. It's their deterrence to stop anyone from attacking them. So are they just going to go and mess around with global politics, or are they just going to like hire their armies out to other people? It seems pretty up in the air. I think. I mean, with the nuke, you can pretty much demand anything if you're the only one with it. I mean, you can level an entire nation whenever you feel like. Do you think he could have mm. maybe used that leverage to, you know, kind of push the push wars forward? You know, because I mean, it yeah. can straight up be like if, like, if there's some kind of political conflict between two countries, you literally have the power to say, like, okay, you guys duke it out, you know, between your armies, or I'm going to blow the both of you up. Yeah, that sounds so weirdly villainous, though. If you look at Metal Gear plans, it's people, like, subtly trying to push stuff around, like, you guys, now fight, and now pay us to use our soldiers, and then make the soldiers fight each other. <laughs> It doesn't quite fit into, I guess, the way the series has gone. So, yeah, to me, that's a bit of a gap. I don't guess I don't really know the whole plan or how it's supposed to happen. Or would it just be what we see in Mitigate Solid 4, where they just fund rebels and then they give illegal weaponry and stuff to what some groups they can fight back against. Get big groups, make them fight back against some other groups, and it's just kind of no big deal. I think you're right there. Like, it's got to go MGS4. And I like that you brought up the fact that, you know, like, it doesn't really seem Metal Gear 1, like, kind of themes the series has explored with all these gray areas and stuff, because I mean, like, when you get to Big Boss, or I guess as we know now it's Venom, at the end of Metal Gear 1 it's pretty, you know, like, villain twirling his mustache, like, aha, you have discovered me, and I am the villain and I do villainous things because I am evil, bah ha ha mm. um, Interesting point too, that would be good to circle onto, um, she is saying, if Solid Snake was never born, then Liquid never existed too <laughs> um, and then so much for a Christmas episode No, um I'll just go for, we'll say the Liquid's still around, but the Solid Snake's not involved in these events, or he's just completely off the thing. So, I guess moving on, if we look at Metal Gear 2 and say Solid Snake just died or didn't show up, and to remind me, Metal Gear 2, oh, it's basically the same thing again, isn't it? Oh, no, there's the Oilix. Oh, right, there was Oilix. I always forget about that. Yeah, so I guess Outer Heaven would have completely brought down the oil economy, uh, the new Outer Heaven, Zanzibar Land. Um, would we have had but, a new like renewable energy resource like what do you think they would have done with that i think they would have used it to undermine the economy as opposed to like going around giving out free oil <laughs> if you know what i mean like they can you know oil is is finite resources scarcity blah, blah 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 so and all the economies are balanced against oil prices but Zanzibar land, whenever they wanted something they could just go oh yeah here's some oil we'll trade you oil for it like essentially they've got a money printer in a very fundamental way. It's like, imagine if they could just generate gold, but it was 100 years ago when people actually cared about gold. Exactly. They could essentially, like, control the world economy at that point. Yeah. That's the thing. They are licensed to print money. They can just create oil, apparently, which is pretty hardcore when you think about it, especially in the context of, was it 95? That it took place? Uh, I no, think 99. 95. Yeah, 95 was Outer Heaven, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So um, that's, I guess, interesting. But we don't really... I can't really remember what the goal was, like, unless it's the same as Middle Gear 1. Like, haha, now I have my army, my nation of, of soldiers, and did, does he have a plan, or is it the stuff we've been taught about later where it's less about fucking around with the world and more about just building an island where people aren't going to mess with them? I think that's it, more or less, because, I mean, like, a lot of the early games have this Lex Luthor feel to, like, the villainy of it. Like, oh, I've, I'm holding the world's supply of oxygen hostage. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I think, yeah, it's more about Big Boss wants to build a something so secure where people, he can't just get messed with from the outside by the, the global political order and stuff. So, I don't really agree that it would be the end of the world if, say, there was no solid snake to come and mess with Big Boss. I would almost say it's a global plus, because you've got this random independent actor, like in the state sense, where the US and, well, the East and West, really, or US and Russia or US and China, or whoever's going at it, it's not just like a zero-sum game between the two of them. It will always be this third independent, well, theoretically independent, political thing floating around who also just like to fight people. Do you think that could have maybe brought the world, you know, like, closer together, like, in the end point? Because, I mean, we learn later that, you know, Big Boss was kind of trying to achieve a world of unity as, you know, fucked up as his views were. I mean, that, in his eyes, that was his end goal. Yeah, that's what he thought he was doing. Um, it seemed like an awfully complex way to get there. Uh, it's quite possible, or that could have been step one, and once they were in a secure position, he might have gone all out to take down Zero and take down the Patriots and bring down what is essentially the US, or at least the US's government. So who knows where he would have gone with that. It could be horrible. Horrible, just horrible. Horrible. Well, shocking. Let's say it all happened anyway, I don't know, Metal Gear Solid without Solid Snake? The whole thing's kind of predicated around them, isn't it? Yeah, I think we'd kind of get into like more interesting theoretics as we move into the Solid series, because uh, you know he definitely seems to play like a more you know he doesn't he isn't aware of it, but like his actions have much more of like a stronger effect on global politics. Yeah, I mean, and let's say Liquid's still doing his thing. I guess what would the plan be? Well, if there was, uh, well, no... we, we, the thing is, we know the backup plan, isn't it? Jim Houseman would have nuked the place. True. Yeah, cool. if uh, if Solid Snake had died at the beginning, definitely that's what would have happened. You know, if he had never existed, that's a whole other bag of peanuts. Tasty. But, uh, you know, if he had died right at the beginning, you're right, they would have just leveled the whole thing right there. But then what happens at that point? Well, I think that's about it. Quick little cover-up. Like, as you, they talk about later on in Darkness of Shadow Mosin and stuff, there's stories about B-2 bombers being scrambled from a nearby base, and the U.S. won't admit to anything, and no one's saying anything. I think that this would have been a something that we laugh at tinfoil conspiracists about on the internet, and they go, no, oh, man, there was something seriously going on there, and you go, no, it's just a, a nuclear mess, it was an explosion or something. And that would be the end of that. Absolutely. I think as far as the series goes, we'd probably arrive at Metal Gear Solid 4. I mean, the Patriots would still, you know, reach their conclusion that, you know, they can propagate wealth and power more quickly through war, and then the war economy would still spiral out of control, except you wouldn't have Solid Snake there at that point in 4 to stop it. And I think war would just keep getting more and more of a larger commodity at that point. Yeah, I mean, if we fly it forwards to that, let's say everything is as it was, or it seems like... Liquid's still there doing his thing. And then he gets stopped. Well, I mean, no, because the real question is what happens with Ocelot? Oh, right. So I guess Ocelot would have gotten out of Shadow Moses because he knows what's going on, right? So he would have found a way out. He's a bit of a survivor. So the real question is Ocelot's plan to become Liquid or simulate Liquid go ahead, because he has no reason to do it anymore if there's no solid snake. That's true, and Liquid would have perished, I assume, in the, in the bombing of Shadow yeah. Moses. <laughs> It wouldn't have lasted very long. So, yeah, like, what would Ocelot do if there are no snakes left? There hasn't got a lot of options left. We know Ocelot and Eva are still around. So is Big I Boss, mean, too, in his coma. Yeah, sorry, I get that, Jumo. We're kind of doing a mixture of talking about each game individually and stuff, but I think the direct consequence of taking Solid Snake out of Metal Gear Solid 1 would kind of just fast-forward us to the situation of Metal Gear Solid 4 anyway. Except, yeah, Ocelot has no reason to become liquid. That stuff's not relevant anymore. So you've got to wonder what his plan would be, keeping in mind he wants to wake up Big Boss and take down the system. Well, Solidus is still out there at that point, too, and uh, they can use uh -huh. Solidus' DNA to uh, unlock the Patriots, right? Yes. Yes, they can. So, yeah, I guess Ocelot's got to find a way to get Solidus' body, but now we've jumped past Metal Gear Solid 2. True, um, true. Which is, like, a, a great game to explore what if Solid Snake wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, what if he wasn't there in the first place? Then, well, not much would have really changed. 
Exactly. I remember the whole the whole goal of Metal Gear Solid Two was to get right and do all the stuff, and then to kill Solid as Snake, which did happen. True, and of course, at this point, you know, once we jump forward to Metal Gear Solid Two, we have to kind of erase the last conversation, and assume that Metal Gear Solid One happened because Metal Gear Solid Two wouldn't have even happened had uh, yeah. <laughs> Shadow Moses not been successful. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Okay, here's another one. If Oh, let's just answer that one quickly. Would Raiden have survived if it weren't for Solids? Uh, he says interception here. I'm going to use the word intervention. Thanks, Prati. Um, would Raiden have survived? I don't see why not. He's pretty capable. He is. He also, like, kind of was falling apart, and Snake would kind of, like, nudge him, like, Snake unwittingly nudging uh, nudged him back on the path that he was supposed to be on the Patriot size. Uh, he is. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I think I think he would have gone and completed his mission, but without Snake, he just would have been a fucking wreck afterwards. Not to say that he really wasn't really solid four, but I think Snake kind of gave him a chance to live after that experience. Whereas without Snake, he probably I think he would have got a shit together. Like keep in mind that Olga freed him from uh, the torture room and. She used Snake to give him the sword, but it's not hard to imagine she would have found another way to get him the sword, right? That's true, but uh, Raiden probably would have also had all the hostages' lives on his shoulders, too, because you wouldn't have Snake and Otacon there to rescue them. That's Yeah, that's a point, but uh, no, I think the, the scenario was pretty successful, and um, he would have finished the mission, and all the other crap would have messed, up, messed him up a lot later. He was capable of being Solidus in a one-on-one when it came down to it. He was doing pretty well against the Rays when it came down to it, but the fact that he gave up didn't matter anyway. That's true. I think uh, another like thing to examine is because I mean, Solid Snake's just him being there, like not even all the stuff that he wound up doing, but just his literal presence threw off the Patriot AI so much. Because like the, throughout the whole game, you have the fake Colonel telling you like, ignore him. He's he's not part of the simulation. His presence means nothing. Just ignore him. Blah 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 blah. So I think yeah, he probably would have accomplished his mission. Like you would have had Colonel, you know, not freaking out and probably steered Ryden back on course a little bit. Do you think that Ryden well, would have found out the truth? Do I think Ryan would have found out? Ah, yes, because I think the whole point at the end is that they're still able to manipulate him into killing Solidus, even though he knows that he's being manipulated into killing Solidus. He doesn't give up and die. He still completes the game, like, ostensibly of his own free will. They reveal themselves to him. I don't think that has anything to do with with Solid Snake's appearance. Because, as you say, they, they control for it pretty well. Like, Rose plays along. Campbell's just like, I oh, don't worry about him. I don't care what that piece of trash said. There you go about the simulation again. They just kind of just roll with it. The AI is able to handle that deviation to the scenario pretty well. Even the appearance of Liquid doesn't really mess things up that much. That's true, and I, I keep forgetting that the AI like wasn't taking that into account either. Mm. But, the, I mean, that was the test. The test was, can the AI handle somewhat scripted environment, even when a whole bunch of random shit's going to happen that it can't necessarily predict? Can it account for it? Can it get the right uh, outcome, no matter what happens? And it, it did. So I think Snake missing, and I guess if, if that's the case, then not. Let's say there's no ocelot channeling liquid either. Yeah, it would have been the same. You could essentially ignore it to get solid too. The only difference is Raiden would be completely useless from that point onwards, so he wouldn't have rescued Sunny. Um, he probably wouldn't have got Big Boss's body back for either. Oh, that's another good point with Big Boss's body too. Yeah, if we can say there was no snake in Mega Solid 2, if you think it's reasonable to say that that um, everything's the same except Raiden's out of the picture afterwards because he's a fucking mess, then it puts Ocelot in a really tricky situation after that for whatever he plans to do. I think I'm right on point with you there. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, moving into that one, I think we can just assume World War 3? Oh, yeah. I, I, I was thinking about this before. It's a hard one, eh? So if we're going to go randomly right back to the start of the series. Yeah, well, there was no Star of the Snake in Metal Gear Solid 3. Thanks there was a you. snake, though. <laughs> yes. So what if there was no naked snake? That's a very bigger, different question. Like, surely they would have sent somebody else in, right? Like, it didn't ha- it, we're at the point in the story where it didn't really have to be Naked Snake. He's not necessarily important. If not that yet, makes no. sense. No, not yet. So if he wasn't the boss's, like, main disciple, then wouldn't she just have another? Wouldn't she have someone else down, the next guy down the list? Was it that necessarily important that it be, uh, that it be like her strongest disciple because I mean the virtuous mission was just more or less you know like a stage it was you know just kind of like to get the boss in there and earn Volgan's trust and get the the philosopher's legacy and so on and so forth and then the the whole virtuous mission was just kind of like a eh, whatever kind of thing yeah i mean if we look at it from what's the point 
or what's the perspective of the mission, the boss, they, they set up a mission that gives the boss an excuse to be there and to defect, right? That's my understanding. Yeah, we've got this, we're rescuing a defecting scientist and the boss is using it as a cover for a defection. There could have been any mission. Of course, it's Metal Gear Solid, so we get like, well, Zero's got a history with the scientist and it's someone he wanted to rescue before, so I guess he just kills two birds with one stone and goes to get Sokolov. But there's no real reason it had to be Naked Snake or... Oh, would it have to be someone related to the boss? That mission, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Then so if it's a snake eater, like Operation Snake Eater, that's when things get a little dicey. Yeah, that's when it has to be, it seems, or as, the, as everybody seems to talk about it, the boss picked or she realized or whatever somebody decided that the boss's best student is probably the person who had the best chance of taking her down i guess that makes sense uh no that's not true naked snake was in operation snake eater to clear his name from the virtuous mission true but like they also thought that he was or at least in the boss's eyes like he was probably the only one to take her down like i don't think the boss like let herself be defeated by naked no. snake either no, I, I don't think so either, but there's been a big discussion about that. So if it were um, anyone else, do you think they would have had the skill to take her down? Uh, if they were trained by the boss, then possibly. It's dicey, possibly. It's dicey for sure. It I, is. Because I like the, the other qu- Sorry, go on. I was going to say, the other question comes back to, is Big Boss really was the genetically greatest soldier ever, and it's even just at a genetic level, he's that great. Is that, is that stuff all true? That comes down to a lot of it. Skullface could totally have done it. Thanks, Salad. I don't know. Maybe they would send Skullface in. I don't think, yeah, I don't think he's much of a fighter. He was more of a logistics guy. That's glorifying Janitor a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. If, if it hadn't been Naked Snake, but it was someone trained by the boss, could that person have done it? I guess we'll never know. It's, it's such a broadly hypothetical question. I like to think, anyways, that, like, we would have reached World War Three, but, like, I also like to kind of pump up the importance of Big Boss. Like, I really do believe in the Metal Gear Solid universe. He was, like, the genetically perfect soldier. Yeah, but if we look at the objective of Snake Eater, it was recovering the legacy. Like, between the boss and Ocelot, they probably would have been able to get it out, right? Perhaps. I mean, Ocelot was, like, still really young and, like, trying to figure himself out at the time, too. And then you've got these two world governments at play, too, where someone well, would have to take him to boss. Together. Yeah, that's the, that's the catch, eh? As in, can America prove its innocence while also getting the legacy? Like, I guess the other question is, would Khrushchev have really done anything about it? Like, in this conversation with President, President Johnson... <laughs> um, he says that he, he'll have to do something because of the extremist faction that are trying to make a coup. Right, the, uh, which actually was going on, too. Like, the Brezhnev faction was, like, a real thing, and then, like, they eventually overthrew him. Yeah, so he, he said he would have had to make a show of strength. Otherwise, he would have get overthrown. Now, I don't know too much about Khrushchev. Maybe he was a pussy. He might have done nothing. Maybe it would have been a pushover and there would have been a big bunch of bluster, but nothing happened. So that's a tough one. I don't know enough about yeah, and Nikita Khrushchev to know if there would have been a World War Three or not. Maybe he would have had the coup before he had a chance to do anything. That's true, and then, like, would they have fired nukes at the U.S., do you think? Like, I mean, no, like, because, like, the coup is what happened in real life that ended up happening. Before that, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you, I got you. So it seems like, yeah, Naked Snake's involvement isn't really that critical to world history, but it is obviously what sets off this secret history of Metal Gear Solid. Alright, so jumping into Metal Gear Solid 4, if Snake hadn't been there or had failed at the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 4, all the other games remaining constant, do you think Ocelot would have kind of snapped out of it, or do you think he's just nah. liquid at this point? Yeah, I think so too. Like, I think he <laughs> convinced himself so much with the whole, you know, double think that we kind of got a preview from Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, I think mm-hmm. he was just so far down the liquid road that he was just liquid at that point. Yeah, maybe he did have a lot of backup plans, but it doesn't seem like it. Like, his plan was to get Solid Snake involved, and then Snake kind of took care of the rest. Snake with, although Naomi was in on it too, so if we're assuming everything's normal up to when it gets solid four, then Naomi's in on it, Eva's in on it, and Naomi uses Otacon and Sunny to get this virus sorted. But who would have got the virus in with no solid snake? Right, exactly. Because, I mean, like, the Patriots, like, it's, it's an interesting question if they would have gone with the virus with someone else or if the AI programming was, like, that specific 
to like, oh, well, Solid Snake's gonna, like obviously going to come in contact with all the people that we want killed, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, there's, I mean, the thing is that um, the Patriots basically allowed Solid Snake into the heart of their system so that he could stop Liquid, which is the same plan that Liquid has in Metal Gear Solid 1, right? He allows Snake to get right up in contact with Metal Gear Rex so that Snake can activate it. Ocelot basically plays the exact same gambit against Patriots, where they allow Solid Snake to get in there, not realizing that Ocelot's used Naomi to cook up a virus to take the Patriots down. Jumo, I agree with Jumo, really. I mean, with no Solid Snake, nothing would have happened. They wouldn't have gotten anywhere, and Liquid would have, I'm going to use air quotes here, would have won and destroyed the Patriots, and then you'd have this fucked up Liquid Paradise that he wanted. And life would have been really horrible for everybody, but there would have still be no patriots. What's uh, Waylander sub called? Liquidia? But I think Liquidia. that's basically what, yeah, it would be yeah. a world of Liquidia. Yeah, it would be. And who knows? Maybe that's not so bad. I, I can't say. I, I think it would be pretty close to what Big Boss kind of wanted all along, if I had to guess. I think so, too. I think we'd still be in a world of constant warfare, but at the same time, like, bringing it back to our universe, just ignoring Metal Gear Solid, like, can you have a world of no warfare anyways? Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Scuffle Grit, asking the big questions. (laughs) But, um, I think the other interesting thing that points to, though, is Liquidia would have been this world of constant warfare, but Liquidia's Wild West would also have Liquid at the top as a king. There's no way he's letting go of power, right? No, he's got to be king shit. I mean, that's just liquid. Yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty natural too, and that's what I nearly brought up before about Big Boss's world. Let's say he he does get his his army of free nations or his whatever it is that he's trying to do here. His nation with an army that's beholden to nobody. Wouldn't he also wind up as kingpin? And whatever he's gone through, there's a point where you start justifying it to yourself. You go, well, actually, I can... I should be making some rules and enforcing this stuff. He would be a bit hell of a dictator on some level, right? He would have to be, because, I mean, Big Boss is eventually, you know, with all this power, he's going to think, well, I know best. I should, you know, be thinking up these things because only I know what the boss wanted and only I know, you know, this, that, and the other thing. I don't think it would have been as bad as Liquid, because, I mean, like, it's basically in Liquid's personality that he has to be on top. I don't know if Big Boss ever necessarily wanted or desired to be king of the world, but, I mean, like, that's pretty much all Liquid ever wanted, was to be, like, the number one person in the world. He wants no one above him. He doesn't want to have to submit to authority. That's that's a great thing about what uh, the Phantom Pain does for his character. We really get a, a better glimpse at that. He can't stand having no freedom or having other people putting limits on what he can do, which is cool. And I think you're right that Big Boss isn't the kind of person who wants to be a leader, which potentially qualifies him to be a good leader. Absolutely. Yeah. So what about No Ocelot then? Yeah, just, absolutely. The conversation we just had was horribly convoluted. <laughs> but um, actually, no, I want to solve one quick one. Do you have any guesses on how Ocelot, like pure fan fiction, what do you think Ocelot's plan would be or what would you do if you're Ocelot? And we're going with the No Solid Snake ever thing. And we've talked about how a lot of things would kind of stay the same. Well, No Solid Snake from when it gets solid. So we end up with Sons of the Patriots and all that stuff, except Raiden hasn't rescued Sonny. He hasn't re- recovered Big Boss's body. And basically there's Ocelot and Eva. Possibly Naomi isn't on it. Maybe they, they got in touch with her, but probably not because Solid Snake wasn't really a solid one. Knowing Ocelot, he would have had to have some backup plan, like if Solid Snake... Are you saying if he's never existed ever, or if he failed like right they off? Let's say he never existed from Metal Gear Solid 1 onwards. So the facility got nuked, Raiden completed the S3 plan, and then just became a complete crazy guy, or just went off the reservation... No one knows where he is or he kills himself. And then Metal Gear Solid 4 happens. I'd like to think that we would get Metal Gear Ocelot, where Ocelot just goes, fuck this shit, and then <laughs> goes in, and he starts doing the sneaking and the fighting and the killing, and he just carves everything up. I think you would have to, because, I mean, his goal would have to be Big Boss, because, I mean, he revered him so much. And, like, even, you know, when Big Boss was younger, he was talking about how the age of the sons of Big Boss would come, and he, he wants to be a part of that so bad that he's, like... I mean, like Big Boss said, uh, Ocelot's like to play his snakes. Like, all he wants to do is just basically be with his buddy. So, I mean, like, he's got to stop at no means to get Big Boss back to the world of the living. That's got to be his final goal at that point. And I think he would do pretty much anything at that point. Like, we would see Ocelot torturing people left and right for, you know, like, any crack at bat he could get to getting at Big Boss. We'd see him murdering people. I think that would actually be a really good game. 
I agree. Um, I really want this game. I think step one is Ocelot infiltrates Area 51 and recovers Big Boss's body or whatever. It's just you and me. No one to get in our way. Step two, he takes it back to Eva and then he starts building up his own unit. Like, it's be the Ocelot unit. And then they would start going around the world, getting shit together. And the big plan would be to get to... Oh, how would they do it? How would they shut down the Patriots? Do you think he'd nuke the satellite as well? <clears throat> or do you think he would try and um, make a virus or something like, like the original plan was with Naomi? I think he would try to probably nuke the satellites. Because, I mean, when that happens, like, wouldn't Big Boss come out of his coma? Because the AIs are the ones that are control like keeping him asleep, right? Mm-hmm. As far yeah. as I understand it, yeah. Yeah, I think he would just nuke him then, because that's the fastest way to get Big Boss out of that coma, and that's got to be all that Ocelot wants at that point. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure he's too much too fussed about the the end result on society because he knows that he can support Big Boss and Big Boss will make the right choices or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like for all Ocelot cares, he could you know nuke you know eight countries in the process, and in his eyes, like he'll just wake up <laughs> Big Boss, and then like that'll be the end of it. Big Boss will fix everything. Like that's got to be the way that Ocelot sees it. Like no matter how bad it gets, Big Boss will fix everything. Yeah, I agree. That that's fun, and now I want to play this game. Alternate Universe Metal Gear, based on It's a Wonderful Life, where Solid Snake tries to commit suicide, he puts the gun in his head at the end of Metal Gear Solid 4, and then he gets visited by a guardian angel, who is Big Boss, who shows him what life was like if he never succeeded, and then it, it turns into Metal Gear Ocelot, where Ocelot takes down the Patriots. I would love the opening for that game to be the like the end of Metal Gear Solid 4, where Solid Snake's yeah. sitting there in the graveyard with the gun in his mouth, and then Big Boss shows up like, oh, let me show you the world, you know, how it would have been if you did pull that trigger. Or if you pretty had, much like, exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, Konami, you can send your royalty checks to Flash Medallion and FM Scuffle Drip, courtesy <laughs> of the podcast that five people listen to. <laughs> right, so that's, that's the first one down. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful Metal Gear life. What other Christmas movie things... Oh, yeah. No, wait. We're still getting asked to talk about No Ocelot. What would have happened if there was No Ocelot? I don't even think the series could have had... Like, I think Ocelot is honestly the most important character in all of the series. In terms of plans and stuff and general story stuff, yeah, I'm with you. He's, he's a, the cog that's right at the center of a lot of it. He makes a lot of things happen. Except in Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah, except, I guess, there's nothing... Yeah, there's nothing particularly conniving about it, but he is... He's enforcing a lot of other people's plans by proxy. Like he's he's the one who's there when other people can't be there. No, yeah, absolutely. I'm not you know necessarily like complaining about it, but like it was. Oh, for sure. But <laughs> it's not it's not his. He's not like sitting around double crossing, coming up with plans and tricking people. Even though he is, it's not at that level. Eh? He's he's very much a grounded level character who's just there to make sure that everything's ticking along okay. Really, I actually kind of enjoyed that because I mean it was kind of like. You know, we got behind the scenes Ocelot, or like what Ocelot is really like as a person when he's not trying to like put up all these facades and stuff. Like, granted, he was like tricking himself. Exactly, you know, that's what over. I love about it. Like, we only get to see the real Ocelot because he's still he's putting up a fake. Like, if that makes any sense, he's not with the real Big Boss. But in order for us to see him, see how he would interact with the real Big Boss, he has to trick himself. So he's putting on another one of his ruses, I guess, like he does in every single game. He puts on this uh, this front, but that front is what allows us to see the real Ocelot. It's fucking twisted, and it sums up Ocelot so well. Um, I really like it. It is, and like if they're doing like a series of movies, which like Metal Gear Solid like often is, if they had focused on Ocelot, I would have loved to see like the movie trailer leading up to Metal Gear Solid Five. Like you've seen him double cross and trick everyone at this point. Now he's got the biggest challenge of all himself <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> that'd be really good so yeah he's a cool character on that front and i'm gonna get solid five although i kind of i would have i think we talked about it before i would have appreciated a few little moments where he was hams it up a bit for other people yeah me too like there's a bit where he's talking through that guy about his revolver and you're like you could have been more ocelotty in that moment or maybe him being with eli he could have been more ocelotty or the ocelot we know but um, oh well. Basically, it's a little bit more flamboyant with his gestures. Yeah, and his growling and his extended extended sentences. He didn't say anything about slamming bullets into chambers or anything like that. I was hoping for Although, to get like one jab on him, and so just we could get one little meow. <laughs> 
there was that. Did you, you've seen the low morale scene, eh? Where Snake puts a knife into his into himself, and Ocelot goes to pull it out, and Snake's like, "Be gentle." And they have this little look, and then Ocelot pulls the knife out. It's like, get a room. Yeah. No, that was great. That was like probably like my favorite like Ocelot and Big Boss scene in that entire game. It was pretty funny, and I loved. I think we talked about this before as well. Like he's talking about how quiet has the hots for Big Boss, and he's like, you know, she fell in love with the legend, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cute. He's just kind of referencing that, and he's like, no, no. Happened to me too, man. Could happen. Happens <laughs> to the best of us. We can all fall in love with Big Boss. I had the hots. He just announces it very casually in front of everybody, just to prove a point. I thought that's a, a cool Ocelot moment. Like he uses the truth as a weapon there, which is quite interesting. I would love to see like all the other soldiers' reactions there too. Is kind of like looking at each other, like, did he just? <laughs> did, 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 oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mello would be just like going crazy inside. It's like, is he? Is he in love with? Do they? Are they? Oh, Boss, come on, we had some. <laughs> it's like, did, did they just have a moment over there? Kaz sneaks up on Big Boss and shanks him so that he can pull a knife out as well. Kaz, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right, so another idea we were bouncing around was uh, like talking about Metal Gear Solid characters in a couple Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. There's right a lot of Christmas movies to pick from. There is, I mean, the uh, obvious, I guess the obvious is Die Hard, but I can't imagine much changing. Solid Snake and Die Hard would be possibly a little more violent. Possibly a little, would you think it would be as exciting? Because, like, is he as, I'm assuming we're not going with the twin snake Solid Snake. Do you think there would have been as many explosions or, like, more sneaking around? Or how do you think that would have gone? No, I think it would have been more or less exactly as Die Hard went. Except he might have cared a little bit less about getting home to his wife. Yeah, there is that. Because, I mean, at Metal Gear Solid 1, he was a drunk living in the woods, you know, just hanging out with dogs all the time. Yeah, and I guess instead of the cop, uh, it would have been Otacon. That could have made things a little bit boring. Maybe, or funny. But, um, yeah, so he's got that cop that he's on the radio with, who's like a <clears throat> donut-loving, out-of-work cop. But instead, it would have been Otacon, so I, I don't know. But I can't imagine it being that much different. <clears throat> he worked with what he got. He took a bunch of dudes down. I mean, he wouldn't have been wearing a sneaking suit. He still would have been barefoot. Got hold of a pistol, got hold of some weapons, killed some dudes. Pretty much cleared a hostage situation. I think, yeah, Die Hard with Solid Snake would just be Die Hard, which is that cool. Sounds, it is. I would have really liked to have heard, like, a David Hayter, like, yippee ki yay motherfucker. <laughs> that, that would work. I like it. How about, uh... Was, there was a really good post that I saw on the subreddit about what if Solid Snake was infiltrating Kevin McAllister's house. Yeah, that was that was funny. I, it's not very... I can't remember it very well. Um, I'm, I'm going to give it to Solid Snake on that one. I, I assume that's how the post went as well. I think, like, there was, like, more debate than there should have been, honestly, because, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. let, let's be real here. Like, Solid Snake would have just, like, gone in and, like, shot that kid in the head, and then that would have, like, been the end of the game. Keep the change, you filthy animal. I guess why is Solid Snake trying to get into the house in the first place? Okay, so let's just say there's a Metal Gear in there. I think he just would have tied the kid up and taken whatever it was going for. I, I agree when you say a lot. There was a lot of uh, a lot of overthinking and discussion in that. Absolutely, it's like no, like Kevin McAllister's like really ingenious and like at a, like such a young age, he like set up all these traps. Like, well, yeah, like Solid Snake's like a veteran trained killer. Like, he don't give a shit. Yeah, he would have been in and out. The kid would have wouldn't have even known that there was a Solid Snake. Snakes, snakes, snakes. I don't know no snakes. It would have been fine. <laughs> uh, next on, for a good Christmas movie, uh, Batman Returns. I love that movie so much. Yeah, I like it a lot too. It's not a good Batman movie, but it's a good movie featuring a character called Batman. <laughs> Do you th are we putting Snake in uh, Batman shoes? Yeah, so the basic plot of Batman Returns, I'm going to go from memory here, is that um, the Penguin wants to become Mayor. So he fakes his way through the political system. Basically, it's Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, and then, <laughs> and then um, Batman slash Bruce Wayne tries to stop him, and also Catwoman is there for a reason. Um, oh, because she got tried to get murdered by a businessman played by Christopher Walken, who's in league with the Penguin. Some of the, the one-liners in that movie, I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, you have uh, Catwoman, like, fall out of her window, like, into, like, the random dump truck, truck. filled with <laughs> kitty litter. Like, for no apparent reason, there's this dump truck driving around with kitty litter. and she It's like, called theming. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> There's a lot of non-kid-friendly quotes from 
the penguin in there too, especially when he's talking to Catwoman. Oh, I can't remember. It's something about eating pussy anyway. That's what I kind of like about the, the Burton Batman movies. Like, it wasn't necessarily like four kids. I mean, like, this is Tim Burton we're talking about. Yeah, again, I think the, the fun Tim Burton gothic movies that happen to have a guy called Batman. Like, he murders people straight up in Batman Returns. Like, he's just killing folks. Yeah, and then like in the later movies, like, you all, you always have to have Val Kilmer or Jesus Christ, George Clooney as Batman. Like, no one is like allowed to die in those movies. It's like the old, uh, the old Adam West Batman movie, like where you see an explosion and then like he, Batman like looks off in the distance and he's like, "Thank God those people got away." Oh, that's that's an unfair comparison. You can't put the <laughs> Adam West movies in a league with the Joel Schumacher movies. My favorite Batman quote of all time still does come from the Adam West one, where the shark comes out of the ocean and latches onto Batman, and Batman looks up at the helicopter and says, "Robin, quick!" Grab the bat shark repellent. Like, oh yeah, of course. Glad we packed that. <laughs> they got, got a whole wreck of them, eh? It's just a funny movie. Those I, I was watching the series a little while ago. There, it's a funny, funny comedy series of Batman. I quite liked it. Oh, yeah. Twelve Monkeys is a Christmas movie. It is, and a very good movie at that. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you put Saw the Snake in that one? It's not really about a physical skill. He's just trying to convince people. I don't think Snake would be any better at that. Nah, like, he actually has like really shitty convincing skills. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Liquid, stop this. Liquid, stop. You can't do this. You're going to kill people. Stop. <laughs> yeah. All right, what else we got here? Actually, I guess we kind of glazed over Batman Returns. How do you think that would have gone with Snake in there? I'm trying to remember Batman's main struggles. Um, he gets framed. So, again, it's just Metal Gear Solid 2, really. Um, he gets framed, and then he gets a recording of the Penguin mouthing people off and just broadcasts it over his, his public speech, and then everyone throws tomatoes at the Penguin. Is there always someone who brings eggs and tomatoes to a speech? Yeah, good thing everyone in Gotham carries around tomatoes. It is. I mean, I love that movie because it's just set in the 1920s for some reason. <laughs> um, the set design and all that stuff is really, 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 really cool. It, it's this old-fashioned, like, comic book 1940s Batman movie. It's quite fun. I think the Penguin and whoever the hell Christopher Walken's character was named, excuse me, would have had a really hard Next time. Trick. Yeah, 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 Shrek. He would have had, like, a really hard time dealing with someone, like, as skilled with a gun as Solid Snake. That's true. They're kind of, a lot of a lot of their plans depend on Batman having to use stupid gadgets. At one point, he's got his program Batarang, and he stops for, like, six seconds. There's, like, six guys waiting to beat him up, and he pulls it out, and he puts in all the targets. Seriously, it's like a 10-second sequence. And then he throws it, and it flies between them all and knocks them down. And then, like, one of the henchmen has a little dog and she jumps up and grabs it the, the dog <laughs> jumps up and grabs the batarang and they walk off and batman's like oh shit guess i'm shit out of luck i've got no options yeah like they took my one like rocket punch batarang <laughs> yeah exactly a solid snake was like hey i've got to take down this corrupt politician that would have gone very quickly i think if you put venom snake in there it would have gone like even better because i mean metal Gear solid 5 to me was like batman who also uses guns like with all the gadgets and shit you get in that game yeah in theory i think as much as i like to play with all the toys i've still found myself kind of neglecting them true true i mean like they're absolutely not necessarily all you need in that game is like a trank pistol like they I mean, do get helmets and stuff but like you can work around that pretty easily i mean cqc will solve just about every problem uh, one thing on that note though the the rock city batman games one thing they do well is that they always keep using your, your toys which is good it never really feels annoying that you're required to use your tool, you know, all your toys and tools and stuff in, in different ways to beat different people or solve puzzles. That's kind of fun. I guess yeah, Phantom Pain would have been nice with more puzzles. Like like you were saying, like it forces you into using the gadgets, but it never felt weird. Like if Metal Gear Solid Five had forced you into using a couple more of them, I think it could have gone off without a hitch. Yeah, maybe. I think there are a lot of organic puzzles in the game, like how will I get in and out of this outpost, for example. And you can use all your toys a, a lot, or you can just fall back on your habits and sneak in, trank people, CQC people, and then shuffle all the way out again. And they kind of bring that in with the riot suit guys who encourage different tactics. Ultimately, stealth trumps all. Like, you don't need any of these tricks if you can sneak past them. That's true. Did you ever play uh, the uh, Arkham Knight, by the way? Nah, I, I played... Um, I rented out the first Batman and really liked it. And then I got the second one on Wii U, and I kind of liked it. And then I left them alone after that, because I thought, I this is not really going to change. This is going to be the same game. Oh, man, I really recommend, like, I know this is off topic, but, like, I think you would really like Arkham Knight and, like, a couple of, like, the story elements that, like, kind of go with it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not that overly concerned with, like, Batman cartoon video game stories, if I'm honest. That's fair. Yeah, just 
that's just me. So I haven't really bothered with it that much. I've kind of stopped paying attention, especially after the third one when I heard they were trying to do a multiplayer and the general game is a bit messed up. And the latest one's got all the Batmobile stuff, eh? Oh, it was awful. I think like the main uh, the main thing that kind of dragged me into Arkham Knight, like when I started playing it, is that uh, like you did finish Arkham City, I think, mm. uh, on the Wii U, and like you know, spoilers ahead for the Arkham series if anyone's you know playing on playing. But like the Joker dies at the end of Arkham City in Arkham Knight, like Batman like hallucinates the Joker with him like pretty much throughout the entire game, and it's like the best joker and batman like back and forth i've ever seen in my life he's like you can't get rid of him he's just a hallucination with you throughout like the whole game oh, yeah. pretty interesting but uh anyways uh got any more uh, christmas movies uh the santa claus the tim burton <laughs> i mean uh tim allen <laughs> yeah the tim allen one the santa claus um what happens if solid snake killed santa and then became santa uh, i think we're running out of it <laughs> I, I don't know how that would have worked. I think it would have been efficient. I totally it would be a very forgot. efficient Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that, that was like the basic premise was that this guy basically murdered Santa Claus and that <laughs> now his like payment back to society is like, well you murdered Santa Claus, so now you have to be him. And now he installed his identity. Yeah, I think it's it basically, it's basically Venom Santa. <laughs> Do you think we would have gotten some gifts falling down the chimney? Yeah, everything would have been falling out of the chimney. It would, have all, it would have been horrible. And then at the end, he would listen to a cassette tape from the real Santa, and he'd remember the truth. <laughs> Do you remember who you are? <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to have seen, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I want to see Snake, like, go down a chimney, and he's, like, planting all the gifts, and then, like, a kid is, like, wandering around, like, huh, what was that noise? And then, like, yeah. sneaks into the thing, and Snake's like, oh, shit, and has to, like, choke out the kid unconscious to, like, leave the rest of the gifts. No, you can't use chokeouts on kids. You have to punch them in the head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, can't, not allowed to do that. He's got, like, a thing full of, like, you know, industrial strength horse tranquilizer, and just plugs this kid in the head. And it comes into the living room. <laughs> Speaking of which, I miss the Santa camo from uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. I've still got it saved on my memory card on my PS2, but I'd love uh, some Santa fatigues for Christmas. I know I asked um, Way Santa, uh, Waylander Claus, for camo fatigues, but I do really hope that, that they put them in, especially since they did, like, the sneaking suit from Snake Eater. Yeah, like, they did the sneaking suit from Snake... Uh, sneaking suit, we got the croc cap, and, like, the Santa suit, you know, like, to people that were, like, really involved in the game, that was, like, the end-all, be-all of, like, the DLC camos back in the day was the Santa suit. Shit, yeah. I mean, I'd, let's push it further and, and go again for, like, special Christmas decorations for your FOB, but um, I'd love to do a FOB invasion as Santa. Santa Snake. <laughs> Especially if you had Christmas lights all over. They're like, man, now you got me wishing for all kinds of shit. I know, like snowy, snowy platforms and like Christmas lights on the on the security cameras and um, little reindeer ornaments on the the UAVs and stuff. It'd be great. I would really like a uh, like kind of like the birthday cut scene where like if you opened up Metal Gear Solid Five on Christmas Day, then there'd be like a little like welcome back for Christmas boss kind of cut scene of him getting off the chopper. Yeah. Hey, maybe uh, maybe it could happen. I don't know. People would have found it by now, wouldn't they? That's one thing that slightly annoys me about the game being on PC. And I'm not going into that big elitist argument, but it annoys me that the code is so easy to get at. That there are no surprises because every time anything remotely happens, someone can just go digging through code and go, oh, by the way, there's this, 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 and this. No, I completely agree with you. I would have loved for the birthday scene to have been discovered organically rather than, like, I think it was, like, the second day the game was out. One of the, the top, I think it was, like, the top post of the day on the subreddit was, like, this is what happens when you go to your mother base on your birthday. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Like, it's neat. There are cool sides to that as well. I, I'm not certainly not talking that down, but... The general thing of being lost in surprise is a shame, and it also it encourages like people to go. Well, what if they're going to patch something in so that we wouldn't find it in the code? It's like, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, exactly. Like everything's there. Like even the nuclear disarmament stuff is there, and that like still has yet to happen. Yeah, all I want for Christmas is nuclear peace. <laughs> Do you think that? Uh, I almost hate this subject too much. Do you think the chapter three title card is going to pop up when we disarm everything? Like, I don't think there's going to be any more missions or anything. Don't get me wrong, but do you think, you know, like at the very end of disarmament, we'll see like the chapter three uh, title card? Yeah, I have no reason to think it won't. Like, it's in the game. You know, maybe that's it. Hey, you got rid of all the nukes and now it's peace. Like, that's not a wild bet. It's still there. It's it's a, 
Although, I don't know, I'm not aware of how much of the stuff's on the disc that's unused. I know there's a lot of audio files. But I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that'll pop up. I don't think it means much. It'd just be part of the disarmament, possibly. But, yeah, it's crazy how much one little texture file of one little title card has created so much interest in the game. It's a great word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, you got any more Christmas movies? Does Gremlins count as a Christmas movie? I don't see why not. It's a fantastic Christmas movie. Again, most of these aren't uh, concluded with Saw the Snake would kill all the gremlins. Which I would pay a lot of money to see. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I hadn't even thought that one through. That'd be wicked. Instead of D-Dog, you'd have Gizmo. Do you think Solid... Like, alright, if it was Solid Snake, I can see him going after all of the gremlins. If it was Big Boss or Venom, I can see them saying, like, alright, we have to go after the... I can't remember what, like, the original creatures were called before they became gremlins. Mugways. But, yeah, 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 Mugways. I can definitely see them taking, like, a long machine gun and just, like, mowing down, like, all of these, like beautifully adorable creatures. No, no, I think it would be more like Snake vs. Monkey. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I you'd, have, you'd have a mission in each room of, like, a, say, Gremlins 2 of, like, an apartment store, and you've got to go in and catch all the all the Gremlins. You're and mine! <laughs> yeah, and Fulton them, yeah. Are we talking Metal Gear Solid 3 where you can eat them at that point? Mm, I want some more. <laughs> oh, some more. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, done and dusted. Okay, so Konami, please. We want um, Snake vs. Gremlins mode. Thank you. Check in the mail. <laughs> Guys in the chat, you got any more Christmas movies? Oh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Ha. Huh. What's the plot again? Oh, God, I can't so, even remember. I actually avoid... Like, that's such a good movie, but I avoid it like the plague. Like, I can't even give you oh, a really? good answer as to why. Jack Skellington... Dun, dun. He is like the mayor of Christmas Halloween Town or something. No, there's another mayor and he lives there. And then like, Oogie Boogie is a guy who's a sack made of bugs and he wants to steal Christmas or Halloween or something. He wants to steal something and Jack Skellington dun, dun, has to um, stop him. Oh, no, here we go. Okay. It tells the story of Jack Skellington, the character from Halloween Town, who opens a portal to Christmas Town, and then he messes everything up because oh, Halloween doesn't right. mess with Christmas. So. Yeah, and he wants to have Christmas. Yeah, 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 I remember. So they got a free Santa. So it's a pretty. It basically is a stock standard sneaking mission, really. Yeah, hey, you'd go in like the dead of night. Everything's procure on site, and you try to put up Christmas lights throughout, <laughs> you know, the whole town. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, did you ever play Kingdom Hearts? It was a Halloween Town thing on Kingdom Hearts. It was quite cool. I did. Fantastic game, and that was one of the best parts of the game. I love that series, yeah. and I can't wait for the next one. I actually haven't, haven't played the uh, like any of them besides one. I'm going to get the HD collection. Yeah. I'm going to go back. I'm the same. I haven't played any of them except one, mostly because like they started coming out on like 3DS and weird side consoles. So I, I was like, oh, well, I'm never going to play this. So I started like wikipedia the story. I was like, oh, my God, this shit is getting fucking weird. This is full-on JRPG territory, like this extended series of games with the most, like, convoluted plot ever. But I really love Kingdom Hearts. It was pretty It was pretty weird. It went all over the place with different characters being different characters, and it was a really cool idea. I see uh, Prodi brought up Elf. That would be a definitely interesting one. Like, I, Elf was always an interesting movie to me because I almost felt like they came to, like, the conclusion of the plot second after they were like, all right, how do we get Will Ferrell to pay to play a possibly mentally challenged person, like, going throughout life? Like, oh, we'll just have him be an elf from, like, from Christmas Town. I think I've seen it. I may have, it may have come on TV at some point. I, I, I don't know much about it. I just know it's, yeah, with Will Ferrell playing a childish, possibly um, special character who wants to do stuff, so I've got nothing. I would love to see Snake do all that, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, it has to be Snake from Peace Walker, though, like, the the dumbest Snake. <laughs> and that really was, like, the, like one of my favorite moments of that, like, speaking of Christmas, is the whole, uh, the Santa Claus tapes. Yeah, oh, I was listening to them the other night, actually. I like slow, dumb, childish Snake. Stupid Snake. Yeah, he's good. Um, I was going to say Love Actually, but that's basically Metal Gear Solid 4. We're a bunch of characters all come together. <laughs> That's so if you, painfully true. If you went through Metal Gear form, put Christmas hats on everybody, it would be love, actually. <laughs> I see a lot of demand from Prady for the Grinch. How the Grinch stole, how the snake stole Christmas. 
again, it's, it's just a pretty standard infiltration movie, really. He's just got to go in and fault in all the presents. See, you know, that would, like, right? I don't want to, I don't want to see that as a movie. I want to play that as a game. Like, I want yeah, that I wanna... to be, like, interiors, like, where you sneak into, like, enemy FOBs and fulton out all their presents out of, like, their medical strut. Yeah, what I'd love to see is, like, you make it as a Grinch game, right, and you just package it as, like, oh, it's a, it's a friendly Grinch game, but just make it, like, the hardest stealth game ever made. <laughs> like, brutally realistic. Like, and if you get caught, like, the cops come in and you're the Grinch and you've got to, like, avoid being shot by, like, overly zealous LA cops. <laughs> and you've got to... Um, you got to get all the presents or whatever it is that he tries to do. Uh, just theme it as like a kid's game and then just make it brutally hard. That's what yes. I make it like rated M. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That'd be an interesting little like science project like to see like how much parents like really pay attention to like the video game ratings. Like if you package something as like a complete like kid's experience and then just have hmm. it be like the most like brutally violent thing ever made. Oh, they don't care. When I was working in a video store, I might have even told the story before this. A mum comes up like, oh, she's like getting San Andreas for her kids and I'm like, went to see her kids and I couldn't see them so I like peered down over the counter and there's like a six year old boy like wants to play Grand Theft Auto maybe eight wants to play San Andreas I'm like you know I don't think this is really appropriate is this for the kid or is this for like your husband or something she like laughed at the idea of her husband playing video games and whatever <laughs> I'm like this is for your kids she's like yeah I'm like this, this isn't really for kids eh and she's like oh yeah I know it's a bit of violence I'm like yeah you know a bit, a bit of language harsh language and she's like oh you know they're, they're just kids it's just a video game I'm like um would you let your kid watch, like, let's say, Pulp Fiction? <laughs> you know, organized crime, like prostitution, drug use. This is not for an eight-year-old, right? And she goes, oh, oh. And she, like, gives the evils to her little kid and goes, well, we won't be getting that. And this kid does a staring daggers at me. I'm like, I'm doing you a favor, man. You do not need to be playing Grand Theft Auto when you're eight. <laughs> the kid's just like, fuck you so <laughs> yeah, I know. right now. I ruined this day, but I, I saved his life. Well, you, you saved him from growing up to be a Hooker beating drug using. <laughs> <laughs> could have been, could have been. Who knows? Um, okay, what about Edward Scissorhands? Ooh, a uh, snake with the scissor hands. I mean, he's so good at CQC. Would it have even been like a problem for him? Yeah, but again, you got to think about what the goal is here. He wasn't just, he wasn't trying to kill people. I think he was just trying to live a normal life. I and mean, we know Snake has trouble with that. True. Right? He never. I guess he he got intimate with Meryl, and that was pretty much the end of it. Yeah, and if he had scissor hands, I don't even think he would have gotten very far. I. It was the hands is like the reverse of a fairy tale. It's like it's this perfect suburban city, village, town, and there's this evil gothic mansion on the corner. And instead of someone like a horror, instead of like a little kid going to the dark forest or whatever, it's like this weird monster coming to live in in suburbia, and it's absolute hell. And he can't live with normal people because normal people are fucked up. Assholes. I don't think Snake could have been able to live with real people, to tell you the truth. No, he, he, I don't think it's his bag, eh? Which is like, it could, like the ending of Metal Gear Solid 4, like, kind of... Like, it's always rubbed me, like, a long, uh, the wrong way, like, a little bit. Because, A, not only do I think Snake, like, really is capable of living, like, a peaceful, normal life among civilians, but he's going to die in, like, a month anyways. And, like, Big Boss is acting like he's giving him, like, this great gift where he's like, now you can live free, like, be a man. He's like, well, I'm going to die of, I'm going to die of old age in, like, a month. Yeah, I, um, I see what you mean, but I think the gesture is really important. It is, but, like, it, it's still, like, it, I feel like I, it robbed him, like, a little bit. Like, he's lived this whole life, and now he gets, like, a couple days to just kind of, like, watch Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> I guess I guess the question is what Snake gets up to in his downtime anyway. Like, what happened between Mega Solid 2 and 4 for him? Like, what was his life like? I, this probably wasn't too bad. He's kind of living with that shit over his shoulder the whole time. When's the next thing going to happen? Is someone going to show up on my doorstep and try and kill me? And the people that I care about, is someone going to, like, pop a cap in Ocelot while I'm out getting groceries? <laughs> um, so, you know, and all that stuff is gone, even, even you know, you're right, even for a month or six months or whatever. I'm also just remembering that there's a bit where Edward Sisterhands has to, like, he gets tricked into breaking into a house for someone. So that would have gone really well. That's very Snake, being manipulated into sneaking into something. Exactly, and that Snake wouldn't have tripped the, the burglar alarm, whatever it is that's going on here, according to the wiki page. Oh, and arrested and released when a psychological examination reveals that his isolation allowed him to live without a sense of reality and common sense. Sound like anyone you know, Jack? <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't strike me as familiar at all. Who do we know that's like that? <laughs> so, yeah, it was his hands. Edward Snake hands. Snakes' hands, what do you want to call it? different movie. Do you want to keep going? I think we could do this for a while. 
We could. I think I'm going to have to call it a night, though. i got to be at work in about eight hours from right this moment. All right, get that sleep. Get that beer and get that sleep. Yep, got one more drink to go. Let's do one more movie while I pour this last drink. Okay, what about... Uh, no, it's not going to work. It's all theoretical. Ooh, Christmas Story? Nah, that doesn't really work. I'm going to save Google search here for Christmas movies that don't suck. <laughs> Bad Santa, I think, is just like literally what would have happened if you took like just before Shadow Moses' snake and put him in like a Santa suit. Yeah, sorry, do you say Brazil? What, what, what are we talking about? Bad Santa. Oh, yeah, that's like a solid snake on any given December, right? <laughs> National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, as mentioned in chat. Ooh, that could be a good one if you got, like, the whole gang together. Like, if you, like... Yeah, jiggle all the way. Like, <laughs> that's a good one from Pride. I was thinking about that. The solid snake has to go and get a toy for, for Sonny. Like, the specific toy that's in high demand. Who would be the other guy he's going up against? Would it be... Uh, what was the Arnold Schwarzenegger character from... What was it Metal Gear 1? One of, I know one of them was based off Arnold. The machine really? one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sh- oh, um, Bloody Brad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Bloody Brad was totally Arnold. Well, there were two of those, so we can say that Solid Snake plays Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, and Liquid Snake plays the other one. The Sinbad, um, I think it was. <laughs> by Sinbad. <laughs> was it we were Sinbad? trying to get... <laughs> we're trying to get Turbo Man uh, on a shopping thing. So, again, um, I can't remember any specific set pieces from Jingle All the Way, funnily enough. But, what would um, be the toy? A uh, Keratan or a Mark II? Or... Keratan, I love it. They're trying to get Keratan <laughs> for, for Sunny. I guess Solid Snake would go straight to the source. He'd just, like, this this other chump would be, like, waiting outside Walmart and shit, trying to, trying to get a Keratan. The Solid Snake's just planning an infiltration into, like, the manufacturing plant. In like Cambodia or wherever the shit's made for two bucks, <laughs> you could throw the um, child soldiers right into that game too. <laughs> shit, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, done and dusted. It, it's a quick um, side op, really. Get in, infiltrate mainland China and find the factory where they're making these Christmas toys. Krampus. Are you going to see that? I'm actually really interested in that movie. Um, I wasn't, but I think I'll give it a shot. I've got Rare Export sitting on my hard drive. It, it came out about three or four years ago. It was the original kind of Krampus movie that set them all off. And now there's like six Krampus movies coming out this year. The Krampus one, I would like to go see it. I don't know if I had time or not. It, I've heard pretty good things, I guess. It's got that guy off Parks and Rec. He's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I, as much of a fan I am of him, I, like, I can't remember his name right now. Sorry, guy. Is it Adam Scott at a complete guess? I think so. I'm like 80% yeah. sure on that one. Anyway, he's, he's not so bad. Um, I've, I've read good reviews from people that I trust. So, um, yeah, I will I will try and watch it. But who knows what it's like trying to go see a movie over Christmas. Yeah, actually, uh, last year I actually wasn't with my family for uh, Christmas. I spent most of my day, like, I had Christmas morning with, uh, like, my best friend and, like, his parents. And then, like, the rest of the day I actually spent at the movie theater. It was actually quite fun. Yeah, I just realized um, I'm going to go hang out with my folks next Sunday. And they're like, oh, we should watch a Christmas movie. I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, I'll come up with a Christmas movie. But now I realize I've got to find one that I won't hate <laughs> and that my mum won't hate. I was thinking Nightmare Before Christmas, but I also suggested Die Hard, and my mum's like, that's not a Christmas movie. I was like, oh, God. Don't so, you know so. anything, Mom? Mom! We'll see how it goes, but Nightmare Before Christmas might be good. I It's like a tradition in my house that we got to do a Christmas story. I, I can't get out of that one. Oh, no. I love a Christmas story. Like, I, I get bored don't... through it, but like it's, it's a good movie. That's the Ghost of Christmas Past one, eh? Oh fuck no no fuck that movie that's uh that's no Christmas Story is the one with like the Red Rider BD BB gun and like the kid gets his tongue stuck to the pole oh, yeah 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 oh well I haven't seen that so maybe I'll just get that you haven't uh, seen that one well no we it doesn't play here it's like a, it's an all American movie oh yeah true 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 no, it's uh I mean it definitely like buys in like consumerism a lot for sure and like it kind of makes a statement on that but as far as like like it is a family movie like there's no getting around that like it's definitely like a G-rated like sit down with mom and dad and grandma and grandpa but like it's it's a classic it's definitely that works for me. I'm, I'm downloading it right now that's me sorted for next Sunday Oh, right on. No, that's good. It's good. Ralphie, a young boy growing up in the 40s, dreams of owning a red, white, a BB gun. Yeah. 
sets out to convince the world perfect gift, long way of from his parents, his teacher, and even good old Santa Claus himself. So, Scuff, being familiar with the movie, what happens if it was Solid Snake trying to get a Red Rider BB gun? Well, uh, once again, it's a straight-up infiltration mission. He's going to, like, because at the beginning of the movie, he sees the gun, like, right there in, like, a store display window. So, I mean, like, he's going to creep back there at, like, 2.30 in the morning, <laughs> drop in through the ceiling, uh, Ethan Hawk style, or Ethan, whatever the hell his last name was in Mission Impossible, like, snatch it up, and then he's going to go kill someone with it. Smash and grab. There's a really famous scene where, like, on Christmas morning, he has to open up a gift from his aunt, and it's, like, this pink Spoilers. bunny costume. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Major spoilers ahead for Christmas story. Twenty five year old. I imagine. Oh, see now, and you know what? I I don't want the Santa camo anymore. I want a pink bunny camo suit. And you'll you'll, you'll understand that after you see the movie. Okay. All right. All right. We have to call it a night. There, Prady's telling us that we have to end it here. Apparently, we do. Thanks, Prady. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you listen, thanks for sticking around the subreddit if you've been sticking around through the last few months and hopefully we'll all see you before or at some point or after the new year with lots more Metal Gear Solid podcast loosely related I'm going to finish my beer (laughs) it's been a pleasure as always cool later on everybody